Along its long and winding path to equality and fairness, education in the United States has had its fierce advocates who have fought for all children to have access to an education. Emma Willard was one of those people as a very vocal proponent for women's education. Her efforts to advocate for equal education opportunities across the genders spurred the development of several girls' high schools and women's colleges. Emma Willard was born in February 23, 1787, as one of 17 children in Berlin, Connecticut, as Emma Hart. She was the daughter of a farmer who encouraged her love of reading and learning and eventually supported her desire to become an educator as well. She pursued education that surpassed the norm of the time and enrolled in school in 1802. Her intelligence and academic progress was so extraordinary that she was teaching there two years later and running the academy two years after that. She continued her career path as an educator, going on to teach at different schools and then becoming the principal of a girl's academy in 1809. It was then that she met her husband, John Willard, and through interacting with his extended family, started realizing the vast differences in boys' and girls' education. Her husband's nephew was a student at Middlebury College and was living with them at the time. She observed his studies and realized that the curriculum that he was learning was far and beyond what had been offered to the girls that she had worked with. As an educator and as a feminist, she couldn't allow this to go on. How would the society develop and thrive if only half of the population was being given the opportunity to advance their education? How could she remain loyal to her convictions as an educator if she turned a blind eye to female education being cut off at a certain point? It was not acceptable to allow state and federal regulations to determine how much women were allowed to learn while men went on learning advanced topics and easily acquiring skills needed to advance their careers. But she didn't just recognize an issue and complain about it. She decided to make a change and to start with herself. Willard began to study her nephew's textbooks and eventually went on to master advanced topics such as geometry and philosophy, which was just unheard of at the time. Five years ago, I'm sorry, five years later, she opened the Middlebury Female Seminary in her home. There, she educated women on classical and scientific topics previously only believed to suit men, but she didn't stop there. The progress that she saw these women make inspired her to write an address to the public, particularly to the members legislator of New legislature of New York proposing a plan for improving female education in 1819. The pamphlet was warmly received by leaders such as Thomas Jefferson and John Adams. Some leaders ignored it, however, due to religious convictions that girls receiving an advanced education was contrary to God's will. However, New York Governor DeWitt Clinton invited, invited Willard to open a school in his state. In 1821, she moved to Troy, New York, where the, where the town council had raised money to start a girls' school. The Troy Female Seminary now known as the Emma Willard School, opened its doors and began its legacy as one of the most influential schools in the U.S. to this day. The school was a critical pillar in girls' education as one of the first to teach social studies, math, and science to female students. The Emma Willard School has thousands of graduates now and is still open and running to this day. Emma retired in 1838 after over 35 years as an educator and spent the rest of her years traveling, lecturing, and writing books. In 1854, she represented the United States at the World's Educational Convention in London. She also wrote and published several books before she died in 1870. Emma dedicated her life to educating and advocating for equal education opportunities for girls. Emma Willard is a wonderful representation of what one passionate person can make. She didn't come from a place of privilege.